The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Larry Pesavento. Hi, everyone. This is Basil Chapman sitting in for Larry Pesavento. I'm usually the one doing the noon time, Eastern time, 11, that's 12 o'clock to 1 o'clock, show called the Tiger Technician's Hour. I'm also the author of the opening call, daily newsletter. Well, let's go straight to the news uh, that's important. We've got the Dow trading at 27,198 at the close yesterday. Apple comes out with very good uh, surprise upside earnings, and it's up about eight points right now. So the YM, which is the Dow futures, trading at 27,224, still stuck in this channel. This is going to be very interesting because after the Fed speak today, that's between 2 o'clock and 2.30, whenever they start giving out that news about what they're going to do with rates, which probably will be a quarter point to cut because... Um, I, I just don't see them going 50 right now. Why would they want to do 50? Uh, they want to save uh, a, little a little time and energy for later when they probably will need it. So I think 25 cents and then say data dependent, that's the very easiest thing to do. And that says that if the Dow starts to trade this late this afternoon and is holding a plus 100 something or other, let's, let's just say it's going to the 27,300s. This is not the futures of the cash. Um, that's going to be very important because the last high, the all-time high, INDU, the, the high on the 15th was 27,398. If by any chance there's a sudden short squeeze or what, whatever it is, and all of a sudden you're looking at the market spiking to the upside, but I would like to see all the indices doing the same thing, not just one. What would happen is that you'd get short covering, and that could last maybe into tomorrow. What's really important about the work I, I do is that this rectangle formation, and I have a, a, a rule that says a rectangle formation can last a lot longer than your patience. We've been in this rectangle between 27,400 and 27,000 for 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 10 sessions. That's, that's almost two weeks, and we haven't broken out. A close on the Dow below 26,950 between now and Friday would be very negative in the short term. The weekly chart is still really strong. Look at the weekly charts all the way around. Look at the weekly chart of the Dow. Look at the weekly chart of the S&P. You can see this, what I call the Chapman Wave Inside Track Repellent Zone. You see this little, all of us have our techniques, and you know, Larry's just got a whole host of techniques that he uses all the time, uses, uses them really well, I believe very strongly. It doesn't matter what you do, just do it over and over and consistently, and if it works for you, just keep using it. Don't have to have anybody give you a check, to, uh, you know, a, a ticket off to say, great, that's, that's it's yours. And whatever I do, I like to say when I'm talking to subscribers, I like to say, this has become yours. Don't think of it as my technique that you're using. Try to develop it so that it's a meld of your own technique, plus maybe a little bit of someone else's, and it becomes yours, a personal thing. You don't have to look up to say, did I do this correctly? You'll know. So what I'm doing is there's a Chapman Wave technique where we look at a D. When you go to the fourth highest peak, that's where other things can happen. S&P made a peak D at 3027 let me just explain that to you in, the, in my technology uh, my technical tools i should say i think of only three patterns straight up or straight down that's one an arch formation that's two and a cup formation that's three what is an arch you go from one point you rally and you come back and you test the left side low it could be an inverted v but it's the same principle and the cup is going from one point down coming back up. Now you can get a mix. So let's call them three patterns, but it's 3A and then 3B is a mix of them. And you get your straight line, 
You get your arch. Why did I make it red? Because if you take out that left side low with bad technicals, in other words, I use the MACD, moving average convergence, divergence, and the slow stochastic, you can go quite a bit lower. And on the upside, in the Y formation, uh, in green, if you take out that left side high, with good technicals, you can keep going higher. So it's very simple. Let's see if it, how it works in practice. There's a very large arch formation. If the Dow doesn't, if the S&P doesn't start trading in the 3100s in the next week or two, this arch formation says you can go chop, chop, chop in the sideways to slightly down uh, formation. And that makes the 2980 level, 2977, very strong support that must hold. Weekly chart, here's this Chapman Wave inside track. Whenever you get into this range, the price seems to pull back. It's like a, a magnet that brings it to you. And then you reverse the magnet and it pushes you away. But the MACD is still strong. The stochastic's at 94%. I think that's fabulous. And the weekly chart is it's just nicked, just broken out of the Chapman Wave inside track repellent zone in the nine-month consolidation from the uh, January high of 2872s down to the low of 2603. It was a February or so. And then you go all the way back in September to 2940, break out, break above the previous high, decisively go to peak E in the Chapman wave, plunge to 2346. Nine months later, that's this month finishing today, you're going right to this, to the edge. You broke above it by a fraction, maybe two points. You pull back 3013 right now. The S&P futures are up um, at 3016, up 4.50. The Dow futures are up 59. At 27,223, obviously helped by um, Apple. Ha, huh, this is going to be really interesting. What happens today? I'll, I'll have my theories and I'll talk about it, but let's go to the QQQ, which is the NDX 100. Peak D, once again, we've got a peak D. We did that through an alternate wave count. Now, the whole thing about this one, I don't want to dwell too much on this. Maybe in my show at noon, I'll do a little bit more on it. Why is this important? Because there was a technique that I used called the Chapman Wave Instant Restart. Go to the fourth highest peak, peak D, and within three bars, you make a new high. But if you make a new high, and the technicals are still good, yet you pull back underneath or right to the low of D, the trough D, that says be careful, because when you make your final move to the upside, peak D or E, in a new buy mode, you could come all the way back, and that would mean you come all the way back to 189, that's four and a half points down, uh, more, actually, at this particular point. So um, this is what we're looking at. So the QQQs have done very well. The weekly chart looks fabulous. The monthly chart has broken out. There's this rising wedge formation. It took out that high. This is not the close. We have to wait for 4 o'clock today. If it closes over 193.17, and it's a 194.38 right now, up 60 cents pre-market, that's going to be a big deal. So now let's go on, and we want to look at um, the IWM, which has been the laggard. The IWM right now is trading at 157.81, down 0.03 pre-market. Look, a rectangle formation can last a lot longer than your patience. Then the 1st of June, 158.03, it's gone down to the 153.60, was it? 153.40 level on the 22nd of July. Yesterday, it runs all the way back to that almost the 158 level. It goes to 157.84, stuck in a range. Let's see what happens here. And um, the monthly chart shows you that it's really lagging very poorly. Now, let's go through the other things. Gold. Gold is up uh, two at one at 1443.9. It's stuck in this rectangle formation. Can last a lot longer than your patience. I'll tell you what I'm expecting to happen this afternoon. And what if it does happen, or what if it doesn't happen? When we get back, the dollar has been absolutely fabulous. It's right up against resistance at 98.05. If you're not right currently back. using the Taz Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The Taz Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, the best way to use the Taz Profile Scanner to profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. 
Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up and coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate State LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Nothing like a little Mozart there to uh, get you uh, all worked up. So we've got, uh, I'm Basil Chapman sitting for Larry Pesavento, the one and only Larry Pesavento. So what we're looking at is gold's been stuck in this range between the 1540s, uh, one little pop to the 14, so the 1440s, one little pop to 1454, back in the range. Um, holding well, look, if you use technical analysis, if you use the uh, nine period and the 14 period moving averages, look how it's really walked the, the nine period, the green one, nine period moving average, but it's stuck in a range. It just hasn't gone anywhere. Look, the MACD has failed miserably, and yet the price has held. I love that. That's saying that there's internal strength. Look at the weekly chart of that big spike to the 1454 uh, level uh, back on the 19th of J July. We, we stuck, and normally what I do is I grab the outer, the outer wicks of a, of a pattern like this in the candlestick, and I, I outline them, and I say, okay, we could trade in that range, and there we are. We're back in that range. That's the daily. The monthly, now, I look at, we're always looking for those leg Ds. The monthly has gone to a leg D. Interestingly enough, in the dollar, the dollar is, has not. It missed it by about 17 cents in my monthly chart. Now, one of the things that we've been looking at for ever since the April, since actually the February low of 2018 for, for subscribers to my opening call, we went along the dollar in April at 90. And we've been anticipating because we you go from one sequence to another, one time frame, the daily then improved enough to make the weekly time frame very strong. Weekly started to improve. All of a sudden, the daily, uh, the monthly started to really look like, hey, that's good action. Then the MACD and stochastic in the monthly went very um, positive. And the dollar went to a peak C, pulled back last month. This month, it came within 17 cents. But wait a minute. The UUP, which is the vehicle that we have since that's the only trading vehicle there, is power shares DB US dollar bull, has gone to a leg D. It is under the previous peak G of 26.83 back in January of 2017, slumps from 26.83 to 23.09 uh, in January of 2018. Love those Januarys. And then rally strongly. And at this particular point, what we're looking at is that the MACD and the stochastic are very strong, but we've missed by 
um, as I say, 17 cents going to the new high. So 26.83 is the level we want. 26 yesterday was 26.61. Oh, it's a little bit more than that because I looked at the, at the left side, peak C, to go to a leg D. So the major move is 26.83. We're under that by, at this particular point, we're under that by about 27 cents, 20 something cents. Uh, yep. And what we're really looking at here is Will the Fed, now here we go, this is the looking outlook for today. Let's go through these things one at a time. Let's go to the Dow. If the Fed says that we're going to cut by a quarter point, you see where the Dow is in this trading band? I've said to subscribers, if we have a very strong rally, and the Dow is holding, uh, holding over 100 points uh, to the upside, preferably in, t in the 27,300s and holding there. That says we could, we could stay in that range uh, another couple of days before we go back into the lower part of the range. If a break into the 27,400s in the next two days would be absolutely really strong. And that would say, hey, watch out. Not only is there a short squeeze, but the new buying coming in because people will be forced into the market. But if the Dow closes any day below 26,950, there's a good chance we continue this consolidation that started middle of June for the Dow, middle of June for the S&P. And what we're really looking at is the TLT. Let's go there. This is bonds. So the bonds have been stuck in a range. The 20-year T-bond fund, this is the uh, iShares. Treasury bond ETF trading at 131.74 down nine cents, stuck in a range. And this range has been going on for quite a while. Oh, wrong one. Let me go here. Look at this. It's been in this range, other than popping out for a couple of days to the upside, it's been kind of stuck in this range. And that says that the TNX, TNX.X, that is the 10 year Treasury bond, um, the Treasury note interest rate trading at 2.061, 20.61. If later today, because of what the Fed says, this suddenly spikes up and closes, not just spikes, but closes over the highs of the 25th and 26th of July in the 21 area, 2.1%, that says, uh-oh, TLT is going to be pulling back so, yes, the TLT is going to be pulling back and it's going to go to the lower register. And what, what I said to subscribers to my opening call is every day I have a whole bunch of indexes and ETFs besides all the stocks and stuff that we're looking at or that we own and that we're using, showing whether long or short or whatever. Um, I've said that if the TLT trades underneath 129.80, in other words, underneath this candle of the 12th, 129.68, let's call it under 129.60. At any point in the next week, you're going to see yields push sharply higher. If, in fact, the uh, TLT breaks into the one right here, 130, I, I want a little higher than that. Let's call it 132.70 area. So that's a, a point up from here and, and holes there. That says yields are stuck in this lower range, and that's going to be important. And that's the way I'm looking at it. And the reason why I said about three, three weeks or four weeks ago, is that I think that yields are stuck in a range for now is because this candle has the potential peak G in the Chapman wave, this long-legged doji with a, with a very tiny open and close on a weekly basis, closing below it the following week suggested that there's weakness to the TLT and that yields could hold um, in the slightly higher, off, slightly off the low, doesn't have to, they don't have to rally strongly, but you could start a rectangle formation here in the TLT in this lower range as well in the weekly chart. So let's make it real clear. TLT starts to trade under 129. That's going to, over the next two days, that's going to suggest yields are going to go quite a bit higher. The TLT trading at 1. 32.70 or higher and holding there, said, uh-oh, yields are going to be stuck in the low range 
and the competition around the world for lower rates. That's really what we're looking at. We're looking at the commoditization of yields, like you had commoditization of the semiconductor chips as they were, prices went lower and lower and lower and lower. So you've got, and, and, and the pressure for other countries to produce more chips because, and other, other companies to produce more chips because they had to sell more so that people would buy more to make up the difference because of the lower cost. That's what we're seeing in rates. So it's not so much because of the economy, because the economy actually on the whole, from what the, uh, we know the Fed looks at, they should be pretty satisfied. Things are going pretty nicely. It's the competition for lower rates that I think is the issue. That's the reason why they're going to be lowering rates. If you look at silver, uh, silver right now is trading down just a little bit down 10 cents at 16 Point forty five made a peaky. There's a rectangle formation is going to trade in this range. So this is going to be important. Here we go. The Fed makes its decision. Let's just say it's 25 cents. What happens next? We're going to have the open of the Dow in a few moments. We'll talk about it in real time in a moment. Uh, Basil Chapman sitting for Larry Bisavento. I'll be right back in a couple of minutes and we'll go live to the market. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. We're back. Basil Chapman sitting for Larry Pesavento. Now, remember, I was talking about uh, my... my uh, 
the characters, characterization of uh, patterns that I, I talk about, the arch formation, the cup formation, straight line move. But I also didn't mention that from an identifiable low, we're always looking for the fourth highest peak. We alphabetize them uppercase on the way up, lowercase on the way down. So this goes peak A, next one's peak B, next one's peak C. One penny above C starts leg D. As soon as it makes a peak, it's, it's called peak D. And at D, the fourth highest peak, other things can happen. It can go on to E, F, and G. It can recycle, a whole bunch of things. But D is what we always look for. That's the objective in the Chapman wave to get you to at least D, and then we've got other techniques to continue. Hold on. This is now, in the weekly chart for Apple, a leg D. Finally, it's gotten to that D, and it didn't look so good down at 170, and now it's at 217. Um, it's only leg B, a call a, a great a leg B in the weekly chart, in the monthly chart, because the MACD has not yet crossed positive, and, but it's a fantastic move going from 233, the all-time high, and a peak D back in, I think it was in August or so, July of last year, plummets down to the December low of 142, round number low, always look for those round numbers, and now we're up, wow, 70 points, 76 points from that low at uh, in leg B at 218. This is going to be very interesting because it is helping the Dow. Now, a couple of things I wanted to do quickly. Let's just do this high-grade copper. High-grade copper right now is trading down. You made that peak. Uh, C is actually already an F slash C. F slash C. And that's saying that we've got to be a little careful here because co copper, really, you know, this is very interesting. Internationally, copper hasn't uh, done very much at all. And that's saying internationally there's, there's a bit of a slowdown. And if you look at wood, which is the international global um, timber and forestry ETF, it's gone from 83 back in June of last year down to a low of 55, rallies up to about um, 60, now it's trading at 58.56, and it's kind of stuck in the lower range. Again, that's an international um, aspect that we've got to be aware of. So here, yeah, let's go through this. Um, in terms of, I wanted to look at, uh, we looked at, let's see what T-bonds are doing. This is, this is the actual T-bond, continuous contract at 154 and 23, 30 seconds, stuck in a range. We saw that. So what happens this afternoon is going to be really important. Everything I'm looking at suggests, even if it's a short, continuing this two-week consolidation going on for maybe a little bit longer, slightly lower highs, slightly lower lows. That's really the configuration that I'd be looking at with the Fed today. I don't think they can do more than a quarter point. They want to save their ammunition for later. Um, I just think that it makes the most sense. And then they can say data dependent. They can they can babble and do whatever they want. But they just kind of stuck here because of the competition for lower rates. That's number one. Number two is if you're looking at, <clears throat> say, the XLF. The XLF had a very good end to the day yesterday, but it isn't a pattern that says to me, unless it, at 2843, the S&P Select Financial Spider Fund, unless it can start to trade in the 2888, 2930 area in the next week or so, it, it's done very well. It maybe needs a little bit of a rest here, nothing wrong with it, it just is a little overbought. So that's what I'm looking at in terms of the, the IYT, which is the transportation index. Look at this, down 64 cents at 139. It's in this rectangle formation. It hasn't broken out. It will break out at 193.36 if it's able to get into the 197, 198 area and hold there for a whole week. That'll be very positive, and that'll start a new leg B in the, uh, in the, in the monthly, in the weekly. But the monthly really needs to get to the 198, 199 area and it needs to do that because it has to break this downtrend line that's so important. And it's been a resistance in this V-shaped pattern. This is like a flank pattern coming to an apex. It can take a little bit more time. And it's not really confirming the Dow's high. So as we're looking at it, the Dow, let's just go through this because it's very important to keep, keep going um, in live action to show you what I am looking at. Look, with Apple, the Dow's only up 55 at 27,250 today, just stuck in this rectangle formation. It is just stuck there. And the weekly chart is still looking very good. Look at the S&P. The S&P is up uh, $1.92, $2 right now, stuck in its own little uh, sideways action. Look at the QQQ. This is with Apple. Stuck. It's actually 
um, up only 15 cents at 193.92 at a peak D. I think that we're looking at the, a really good chance that after the Fed says what it has to say, the market says, uh, you know what, um, not too much has changed. And, and not only that, yields are telling us that they are in, independent in their own way of, of, of looking at the market. And they're just suggesting that um, to appease the Fed is going to do this. If they did it purely on the data and they really were data driven, at this point, they would say, we're going to hold off just a little longer. I don't think they can say that today. Why? If they do, expect this market to pull back quite sharply because it's going to get a little bit afraid of what's going on. Now, let's do something else. I wanted to show you the uh, SMHs. The SMH is the semiconductor index. Again, red. Uh, down a dollar twelve, it's had a spectacular move going going from round number. It goes from the eighty point seventy one level in December to the most recent high. I think I forgot to put that in. Did I not type that in? No, I didn't. That is a new high of uh, one twenty three fifty. Oh, there it is. One twenty three fifty six on the twenty fourth of July. It's just gone. Look, I, I love the way markets do this. You know, when you're a technical an analyst, you look at you look at the patterns. And you say. How on earth does it, how does this know that it can make a slightly lower high every single day and it, you can draw a straight line? I mean, how does it get to do that? You can understand horizontal lines because you go to 200, pull back, you go back to 200, you pull back, go back to, there's your horizontal, 200 is a resistance level. You come down, you hit 190, 190, you go up, 190, you go up, 190, 190, 190, you keep tre trending at that 190 level. As support, you know that that's support. But how do you say that the high of um, all time high of 122.56 on the 24th gets to 122.70 the next day, 122.10 the next day, 121.43? Look at the straight line down. How did it know that at some point it's going to pop to the upside or spike to the downside? I think this leg D, potential peak D in the weekly chart. Of the, S &P, of the semiconductor index is suggesting to me that we could go sideways for a little bit, a little bit sideways to a little bit down. And this is so interesting because everyone I've spoken to now in the semiconductor in, uh, industry says, well, the booking, the bills, the, the, the actual billing and the booking, uh, we don't see that kind of rise in um, coming in. Uh, maybe a couple of companies, but mostly they're not applied materials, etc. They're not coming in. And yet, the semiconductor goes to an all-time high. Is it telling us something? Is it saying that later in the year, it's gonna, there's going to be a spectacular move in the semiconductors? I don't know. But what I can tell you is that um, this is one of those cases where the fundamentals were totally wrong, and the price went from a low in December of 80 to 123. That's... <laughs> That's a 50 over 50 percent gain. That is incredible. So I think that it's due for a bit of a rest here in the semiconductors. We'll see what happens. Basil Chapman, Tiger Editions out. We're going to be looking at Halliburton from one of our Tigers in a moment. I just wanted to show you that LC, which is live cattle, made a peak F. Actually, it's a peak G top uh, recently, and it's pulling back a little bit. I'll show you some of the others. I'll show you wheat and the others as soon as we get back. Basil Chapman sitting in for Larry Pesavento. Be right back. Dow is up 72. S&P is up one and a half. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from 30000 to 75000 the interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in a Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. Tom O'Brien published the 900th issue of his weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, on July 22nd. It's amazing he started The Gold Report more than 17 years ago when gold was trading at only $252. To celebrate, we're having a special Tiger Dollar sale. 
Right now, you can spend only $495, and we'll give you 200 extra Tiger Dollars. So you'll end up with 695 Tiger Dollars, which is the yearly price of the Gold Report. Tiger Dollars can be used for any TFNN newsletter or service, and this offer is open to new and current subscribers. With gold making six-year highs and gold mining equities trading higher, this is a great time to sign up for the Gold Report at a dramatic savings. For all the details, visit the front page of TFNN.com. This deal ends July 31st, so don't miss out. Get your Tiger Dollars and sign up today for the Gold Report 900th issue sale. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. The Bull Bear Binary Option Hour, next on TFNN. So real quick, let's look at the wheat. We did a spectacular run. It made that May, May low around about the 418, right in the continuous contract, runs up to the 558 level. Now it's down at 490, so it's consolidating those huge gains. Uh, soybeans had a, type it in over here, wrong place. Soybeans, uh, so um, wheat is down six and a quarter at 491 right now. Soybeans are also down when I last looked. Yep, down four at 892. Also, had, oh, this made a lower low to a trough D, to a leg D to the downside. Had a fabulous run from about the 816s to the 944 level, now trading at 892. So that's just, uh, it's, it's really taking a big breather after that move to the upside. We'll see what happens with the dollar today, because I'll go through the dollar in a moment. Um, corn. Uh, oh, so why am I hitting that? Okay, corn right now is trading. And when I last looked, it was down, and it's still down four and a quarter at 407. Then it had a wonderful move from the 351 level all the way to the 200 period moving area. You see that orange line? You don't need these lines until you need them. Hits it exactly uh, right there at the 465 level, now trading at 407. So had a big move, and now it's consolidating. Today's going to be very important because, look, if the dollar... As I say, we've been long since 90.07 back in April of 2018, anticipating a leg D. It hasn't done that. The UUP, and let me just show you exactly what we're looking at. UUP in the monthly chart has made that leg D. So let me just move this over. The, on the right side is, is the monthly. I'm just moving it over. On the left side is the daily. Now what we're looking at is this beautiful cup formation. There was a small cup. Now there's a bigger cup. Has gone to the leg D in the UUP to a recovery high, a multi-year recovery high. But it's the dollar, which is the, the root. I'm not interested in the... Um, I'm not interested in the trading vehicle. I want to see the route itself get to that leg D. So if by the end of the day, the dollar gets smacked because a yields are starting to, you know, it, it, it impacts because the Fed has made a move um, and wanted, um, ha has lowered by a quarter of a point and the, and the uh, bonds uh, respond. If the dollar actually starts to trade in the 98.88 level, it's at 98.03 right now, and holds there. Par is going to be the next the next uh, level on the upside, but quickly going from a peak C to a leg D says be careful because there's only if there's only a modest high, you can take time by pulling back after that. So this is going to be really important for me. What happens with the dollar, and it's going to be important for the international um, uh, uh, companies. So this is important. You, your peers, as I say, has already done the job. Uh, and that's what we're along the UUP, which is great, but we want to see how it impacts all around. So I went through everything that I'd be looking at at three, let's call it 315. 
uh, well off to the Fed announces at 2 is Eastern time. So it gives you 45 minutes into the close. If the Dow is up 120 or more, the S&P is up 10 or more. This is all going to be really, it's going to squeeze and you can go all the way into maybe Thursday or Friday. But if in fact it's just, if there's an absolute standstill and the market just stays dead, doesn't know whether to go up or down, that means we've gone into a sideways, the sideways consolidation that's been unfolding is going to continue with a good chance that we will break to the downside at some point. Doesn't have to be hard, but you'll break the support to the downside. However, if there's an immediate plunge and that, that minus 30, 130 in the Dow, regardless of what Apple's doing, it's going to have to really struggle to, 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 to break with Apple being so strong, up almost 11 right now, that's going to be important. Okay, so done with that. Hell was a question I had, not H-E-L-L, -L, but H-A-L, which is Halliburton trading at uh, 23.16. It's, it's down four. So the question was, what's it doing? Well, if you use Larry's um, Gartley's, you've got, almost got some kind of a Gartley pattern here. I prefer to think of it as a large arch formation with a small arch formation that went to a higher high and a higher low, and it tells you that it's kind of stuck in a range. Now, the question I think I've had a couple of people ask me, is there a chance that the oil service like Halliburton, could it start a move? after such a massive decline from the way in the 50s, 56, 57, down to the most recent low in, in the 21 area, could this be the start of a, a more intermediate term, slow move to the upside? And I think this is the chance that it has. Why? Because the technicals are starting to improve with a slightly good improvement in the, in the price itself. I don't like to see technicals moving up without the price. It's doing that. That's good. So Halliburton, I'm just going to say if you're long, I'd stay long. I'd give it a bit of room here. 2250 should be support, maybe even 2230 if it breaks that. I'd be a little careful. I wouldn't get out. I'd just say, all right, now watch this real closely. I just don't want to see a close in the 2150s again. So, yep, holding it here is okay. But I really want to see by Monday of next week, within three days, two and a half days, I want to see it trading in the 23.58 to 23.62 area. And that'll say, great. Now it's going for the 23.94, 14 period exponential moving average in the weekly chart that it hasn't been even close to, uh, although I tried last week, but it hasn't closed above it for months. And that's going to be very important. So, yes, I do like it. I wouldn't get too aggressive. I think if it starts to work, you'd be able to add to it. Okay? So that's the way I'm looking at it. Just real quickly, an E-mini went to a peak C in the five-minute charge, plummet, and making an arch formation. Sorry, making a, an arch formation that's breaking to the low side. I really think that going into the uh, into the report at 2 o'clock, you could see the the market just in a fairly narrow trading band, just waiting, waiting, waiting. It, it's what happens immediately. Then what happens after that initial move one way, does it stay in that direction? It usually reverses course and then goes back again. I'm just making it as simple for my subscribers as possible. We actually... I have a very interesting, we haven't done this in a long time. We did a little bit of it before, so we, we, we went short. To, let me just do this so that you can understand the thinking behind it, just not that we're arbitrarily doing things. Back in April, at uh, April the 22nd, I believe it was, the, the, all time, the recovery high in the Dow to 26,695 on the 23rd was your peak D, leg D, then a peak D. The day before that, we had gone short. And we went short and took profits on the way down. The very day of the low of Ju June the 3rd, we got a trough F uh, with all the technicals indicating that there was a really good sign uh, of a turnaround. So we went long. And the very next day, we got out of any leftover short position. And we've been long on the way. We took a little bit of profit on the way up. Now what we're looking at is we also went short seven points at a peak D from the high on the 16th of July, 27,391. The all-time high was 27,398, seven points higher. And we, we added to that position. This morning, we, that, that position was just, uh, we took a tiny little bit of profit on that. And we, we've now got less of a position, but the bias is towards the downside, just on the shorter term. This is very tough, I, I, because I don't see us going back to the ju ju June 3rd and to try to pick a low says that you might miss once or twice and that's giving away percentages. I said, let's rather keep a core position, even if it's just a one third position of the 200% long that we had. Um, let's just keep that and, and try to articulate 
where the levels are here that are very important. And if they don't hold, we, we, we will just trade the short side. Some of our long side will be ameliorated because it's going down. But the bias, the weighting is more to the short side. So overall, we make it uh, it'll look good. But I am anticipating in 2019 that we go even higher. And that's the most important thing. That's the reason why I'm trying to keep the core long position for intermediate term which we've had since June the 3rd, at the same time, starting short positions just on the Dow. We haven't got any other short positions, although a lot of stocks look, and I'll talk about them in a moment, and more in my show, the Tiger Technicians Hour, coming up at noon. I'll be right back. Basil Chapman sitting for Larry Pesavento. Be right back. Dow is up 70. S&P's up 1. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. So if you look at the IYR, the iShares of the Dow Jones U.S. REITs Index, this is the commercial real estate you, you're looking at something very interesting because it has made a peak D in the weekly chart, got repelled at that Chapman Wave inside track, uh, repellent zone, reversal, or resistance area. <coughs> Excuse me, but the week, monthly chart has gone to a leg B, all-time highs. This is really important. What happens this afternoon with rates? If the rates jump sharply, maybe the IYR um, tells us a story because if it actually rallies as well. It means that people are looking at capital gains plus dividends that are increasing. Or if it suddenly uh, drops and you see it down a point, it says, uh-oh, it's had its big move and now it's consolidating. Beautiful cup formation, look at this cup formation, look at that. You remember we were talking about that, but you can also make the case that it had a successful arch formation 
and uh, I can even see Gartley right here. I don't want to draw it, but uh, yep, I see a Gartley, and that targets the 91 area at some point. So this is going to be very interesting. It's trading at 90.05. So what what am I looking at? I told you before, this is going to be very important. If there was no Fed at all today, uh, any Fed speak, I would say, you know what, this is going to continue a little bit longer. And as you usurp the energy to the upside with so many stocks like a Visa, uh, look at this, Visa is down after peak D in the daily, peak a leg D in the weekly in that Chapman Wave inside repellent zone, very strong move in the monthly. So Visa could be imp important, the whole uh, area of these um, credit cards. Look at this, peak D in MasterCard in the daily. So if they, they start to drop, after the Fed announcement, that's just telling us there's going to be a little bit of a change in some of the financials. If you look at the XLF and the XLF, instead of dropping, suddenly rallies into the 2860s. There's a 2840 right now. That's good action if it drops into the 2820s. Says, oh, oh, be careful. So there are definitely things to look at. If there was no Fed, I would say that we very close to some kind of we've started a consolidation and we should continue that consolidation. So how does the Fed impact or affect that? Apple's up sharply and yet the Dow's now only up 57 and the S&P's only up 121. I think I'm looking at more weakness than strength at this particular point. Not big bear. I'm just saying consolidation is important for the next step to the upside. Have a wonderful day. Why don't you listen to my show at noon, the Tiger Technicians Hour, if you're interested in my notations and discussing the various charts in terms of the peaks and troughs. Thank you for being here. Stay tuned. Tommy, 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 right up here for the Bull Bear Binary Options Hour.